we're going over the pond again. And we're inviting one of our friends from the UK, Jan Aspirian. How are you doing today, Jan? Hi there, Brenda. I'm very well, thank you. I am debuting my Bitmojo on Experimenter oh. t-shirt, the worldwide debut. Can you stand <laughs> up so we can see it a little bit closer? I want to see the t-shirt. Is it? Ah, it's like, there you go. And speakers on a desk. That's cute. I love it. <laughs> you experimenting like me. <laughs> very clever. Well, thank you, John, for joining us. And um, we are uh, moving into our kind of ha second half of our day here on our LinkedIn mm -hmm. Live-a-thon. And John's going to be talking about how to best approach people to connect and building upon some of the things that we talked about with Beth here today. And um, what I love about this event, John, is we all have different insights that we're bringing in. And sometimes they they overlap and sometimes there's nuances that are a little bit different. Um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. Before we jump into the conversation, want to remind people, if you're just starting to join, this is a LinkedIn Live-a-thon for job seekers. And I focus this event on people that are working but looking. And I want to remind you, if you're working but looking, you might not want people to know that you're watching, okay? If you watch, we can't see you, but if you like the post or if you comment on it, we can see your name popping up. So uh, be aware of that as you're watching the broadcast here today. And John is a uh, one of the people that I have on the, the Meller Marketing LinkedIn Rockstars list. If you guys know the backstory, he was actually the person who inspired me to create the list. Some people may not be aware of who you are, John. Could you take a minute, tell us a little bit about who you are and what's your business all about? Yeah, sure. I'm a B2B copywriter, so I write content for business websites, blogs, case studies, long-form articles. And in the last four years, I've specialized in helping people build a better LinkedIn presence. So I write content, LinkedIn profiles, short-form and long-form content for LinkedIn as well. And I call myself a LinkedIn nerd and an eager experiment. Uh -huh. I love poking and fiddling with this platform and seeing how it works. And we are so glad that you do that, John, because we learn from you. I learn from you every day, every week, and I'm sending so many people um, to you all the time. And I see you've got something strategically placed behind you. Uh, <laughs> you <know? laughs> uh, a little pack of my books. Yeah, awesome. Content DNA is something I wrote, uh, published almost a year ago now. Uh, it's my book about uh, how to build an online presence uh, for for your business on whichever social media platform, whichever website you've got, um, to build a congruent and consistent presence so that you can be noticed, remembered, and and preferred. It's been really well received. Thank you for your support with it, Brenda, yeah. and good luck also with your own book too. Thank social you. Media and I've, I've got your book in my bookshelf. I'll I'll pull myself off camera a little bit and grab it off, and I want to show okay. it up on screen. But before um before I do that, I want to start to jump into this conversation here today, John, and 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 I want to hear your tips on how. You know, there's people that are watching that are, some are unemployed and actively in career transition job seeking, and they're trying to build up their network. That's a little intimidating. How do we do so? But then there's also the people that are working, but looking and looking to build up their, their networks as well. So so what yeah. advice do you have for these talks? Cool. Well, um, I've got some slides prepared, so it'd be really great if I yeah. could share my screen with you. Do I have permission to do that? Yeah, please go right ahead. So what you'll do is I think if you click okay. on share screen and then right. as a StreamYard host, I'll have to give you permission and then I'll pull myself up out of the video view as you start your talk here today. So let's see okay. if I click on add screen. We're getting this really cool camera effect going here. So let me take this okay. out. And hopefully you can see a keynote with Oh, wrong one. There's your there's your clubhouse. Oh, is this it? Is this the right one? Yeah, it is. Oh, and I thought great. I'd very, very quickly pull up my clubhouse details since uh, Beth was just Please. talking about that with you. So if you want to connect with me on Clubhouse, then uh, look up at Esperian. I'll be happy to connect and chat with you there. Uh, and today uh, I'm going to give you a few tips on the right way to approach and connect with people on LinkedIn. I hope you can see my screen successfully now. Yep, it's um, perfect. Go right ahead. Awesome. Okay, so um, the, the, the first mistake that people make often is that they just jump straight to trying to connect with the people that they, they want to influence or the, they try to build a network really, really quickly and they, they try to jump straight to connecting. And actually, the first tip I'm going to give you is maybe it's a better idea, instead of connecting with people, to visit their profile and use the more menu and go to the follow option first. Now, when you visit most profiles, you will see a connect button. You might not always see that and we'll get to that in a second. But if you want to learn what someone is putting out into the world, it's a really good idea to follow the person first and look for opportunities to engage with them publicly before trying to make a connection with them. 
So let's say that you visit someone's profile. What you can do to see whether they're active or not is you can look at the, towards the top of their profile, they'll have an activity section. And in there, you can see recent comments and posts, and you can click a link that says, see all activity. And if you do that, that will take you to a screen that will let you see all of their activity, which is things like posts, but also comments and likes. But you can filter that down just by the person's posts. So even if you don't want to give a public signal that you're following a person, what you can do is go to their profile just the once and go to their posts feed, and then you can bookmark their feed so that you can follow the content that they're putting out in public. Now, whenever you do this, you'll see that the, the, the address bar that you get, what the browser loads for you will be their profile URL and then forward slash what I've got on the screen, slash detail, slash recent hyphen activity, slash shares. If you put that little snippet of text at the end of anyone's LinkedIn profile, you can follow their content without them really knowing that you're following them. They, they don't get any kind of notification that you're doing that. So for some people, you might want to follow them without giving them a signal. For other people, you want to just click the follow button and then look for opportunities to engage. Note that when it whenever you're looking at an activity panel like the one I just showed you, Nothing will be shown if the person has been inactive for the past 90 days. So that's sometimes a good signal that the person really doesn't use LinkedIn very much, in which case there's little value in, in following them. So let's say that you do actually want to connect with someone. So what do you do before making that connection? Well, you've got to do, do your research. So that includes things like reading their posts and their articles, looking at their about statement and looking at the featured items, what they have deemed to be the most important things at the top of their profile. You want to read their experience and education sections. Those are the things that read most like a CV, but there's lots of interesting stuff you can learn about where someone worked, what skills they've got, where they went to college and so forth. Try and read their recommendations as well, not only the ones that they've received, but also the ones they've given because they've written those themselves. So you can get an idea about their style of writing. Take a look at their interests, their licenses, their qualifications. And one extra bonus tip on this, have a look at the bottom of their profile. See what kind of languages they speak. Because sometimes people can speak more than one language. And one of my favorite tips is to find out if they do speak another language and then use that in your invitation or in one of your early messages to them to say hello or thank you or whatever in that language. Google Translate is great for this and it shows that you've paid some attention to that person's profile. So let's say that you are actually at the point where you want to try to connect. You've done your due diligence, you've read their profile, you've read their content, then what? Okay, so it's obvious, isn't it? You click the connect button and then you forget about it. No, that's not right at all. Actually, what you should do is click the connect button on the desktop and then click add a note. You don't click the send button because otherwise that will send a blind or generic invitation to the other person. And more often than not, that's the kind of thing that is likely to be lost in the noise, especially if the other person is really quite busy and has tens or even hundreds of invitations coming in at them every day. So if you click add a note, uh, you get up to 300 characters to write something based on everything that you've learned about them, everything that you've seen from their public content, everything that you've learned from reading their about statement, and you can write something personal. So use the person's name refer to something that they've they've produced, some content that they've written, something that was interesting in their profile, some kind of area of common interest if you can. And even though you've got up to 300 characters, you don't need to use anywhere near that many. I usually recommend something of about 100 to 150 characters, about half of your total allocation. That's enough to get across some personality and show that you're targeting just that one person, not a blanket message that you would send to everyone. Now, if you visit a profile and you see the follow button by default, uh, then that means that the person has made a change to their account. And if you want to to, to jump straight into connecting with a person like that, you can do so through the more menu and then click connect. So actually the follow button and the connect option have switched places in this case. If you've chosen to follow someone first, 
and then you visit their profile again a second time after you followed them, you will see then that the follow button will automatically convert into a connect button. And I think this is a good two-step approach. You follow someone first, you consume their content and look for opportunities to comment and, and support their content. And then using what you've learned about them, you then move on to connecting and then sending a personalized uh, invitation with some information that's relevant to what you have learned about them. Now on mobile, and Beth talked about this in the last session with Brenda, um, clicking the connect button or tapping the connect button actually isn't the wise play because that doesn't prompt you to send a message. So instead, to make sure that you do send a personalized invitation on mobile, you tap the more button and then that will pop up an extra menu and in there you select personalize invite and that then gives you your same 300 characters to write something personal so that the person will connect with you. Once you've made a connection with someone, so let's hope that someone has accepted your invitation to connect, there are a couple of things that you can do to really personalize communications. One of them is to send a voice note. So on the mobile app, look for the microphone that's to the right of the text entry field. And if you hold down that, you can record up to 60 seconds of audio. And when that appears in the LinkedIn direct message stream, it will look like this, a blue bar that both sides can play. You can play this on desktop. You just can't record it on desktop. You can record only on mobile. So quick summary of voice notes, and I use these all the time. They can be up to 60 seconds long. So unlike on WhatsApp, where you can go on and on, these are limited to 60 seconds, but you can send multiple voice notes if you wish. Um, the, the voice notes will stay in the direct message feed, so you can always refer back to them at any time. Both parties can hear the voice notes. Um, they can't be saved out or forwarded, so that makes them really quite personal. You can't send the same voice note to 10 different people. Uh, you'd, you'd have to record them individually. So I think that makes them even more powerful. If you want to take a step up from sending people voice notes, you could send people native video. Now, what does that mean? Well, on the LinkedIn mobile app, you'll see that you've got some options at the bottom of the screen where you can record um, uh, a video in the top right corner there. I actually don't use LinkedIn's own uh, internal camera for recording video. I use something called Apple Clips, and I've got an example of an Apple Clips video that I've recorded. This is for iOS iPhones only, um, but you can record videos as well through your camera through, through Android if you wish. Here's an example of an Apple Clips video that I recorded. So there we go. The, the cool thing about this is that it's free to add your captions as well. So if per, people don't have sound turned on, um, it, it's a really nice extra bonus feature that you can put through Apple Clips. And once you've recorded one of those videos, you can then save it to your camera roll. And what that means is then you use the photos option in LinkedIn mobile to share that video that you have saved. So if you're on iOS, this is for iPhone. In fact, it works on iPads as well. Uh, you can get hold of clips from the App Store. Um, when you record videos for people, it's it's a good idea to use square videos as opposed to landscape. So I've got an, I've got a landscape example on the left hand side. I've got a square example on the right, and square is kind of better for LinkedIn because it takes up. 78% more space on the screen than a landscape video does. And that's good for getting people's attention and getting them to click on your stuff. Now, what about direct message introduction? So here's what I do when someone uh, tries to, um, you know, get in touch with me and direct message me. I'm going to read the person's profile and their incoming invitation message. I will, if, I, if I'm going to accept, I'll send them back a quick hello via text first. And then if I get a response to that, I will send them a voice note, as I showed you earlier, or I'll probably send them one of my Apple Clips videos. Um, sometimes when time is short or, you know, if I'm in a noisy space where I can't really record a voice note or record a video, I might send them a pre-recorded video message. And this is what that looks like. Now, I've got a load of text, a link, and I've got a preview image here. Now, I'm, I'm not typing all of that out by hand each time. What I'm doing is I've saved this content that I've got here in a in a text snippet 
in an app called Text Expander, which works on Windows, it works on Mac, it works on iPhones. It's really, really useful uh, little tool for saving text snippets. So I'm just going to quickly zoom in on what my message is, my pre-recorded message. I'll say it's a quick hello. I send them a link to my pre-recorded message, and then I've added a bullet list with emojis at the front to say what this is. It's not a sales pitch. It's nothing inappropriate. And I say the camera adds 10 pounds. And that's just a little bit of humor. And it tends to put people's guards down a little bit, and they'll be more likely to click through to watch the video. And then on the, the first still of the video itself, I put kind of some deliberate trust signals in here. So you can see that I'm smiling. I've got an open hand waving at the screen. I've got some personal branding stuff going on. So you can see my name. You can see my book in the background. I've uh, added captions so you can see that you can read along in case uh, you don't have the sound turned on. And I've also at the bottom given it a title, which is quick LinkedIn hello for non-meanies. All of those things I'm hoping are going to build trust with the person who's going to look at this to say, yeah, this is worth clicking and worth spending 30 seconds of my time uh, looking at. OK, um, another quick tip for you about engaging with people is make sure that you follow back the people who are uh, following you. So you can take a look at who's following you for chances to uh, engage with people because you're much more likely to connect with someone who's already following you. So if you go to linkedin.com slash feed, slash followers, uh, you can see who's following you. And from that list of people, you might think, oh, that, would, that, that person would make a great connection. Maybe they've been following me for a while. I'm going to go and find out more about them, follow them, and maybe I'm going to go and try and connect with them. But if you do that, it's important that you just don't jump to sales because it's, it's, it's probably the biggest mistake. And it's, it's the number one thing that I think has turned off a lot of people from LinkedIn is they connect with people Maybe they connect with too many people and then a proportion of those people just jump straight into their DMs and they're trying to sell their course, trying to sell their product, trying to sell a service. And it all feels very salesy. So don't be that person who jumps straight to sales. Try and have a human conversation with people when you engage with them in public, but also when you connect with them in private and start direct messages. And it's very important wherever you can, and this is my whole ethos to all of my content, is to try and offer something of value to the other person first before asking for anything. The more value you can offer, the more valuable you become to your network. And that means that people will want to refer you for work. Maybe they're in a hiring position and that's exactly what you know, what you need right now. Or maybe they know someone who needs exactly what you can provide. But if you're a non-sales and you can offer value first, uh, then you'll set yourself up for success on LinkedIn. This is the long way of doing it. It's the, it's the long game rather than trying to jump for immediate results. But it's really worked well for me over the last four years. Um, I've got loads of tips on uh, LinkedIn on my uh, LinkedIn Learn Lounge. So go and take a look at experian.co.uk. Uh, slash LinkedIn. Uh, that's all I've got for you today, but we're going to open up, I think, for questions back with Brenda uh, now. So I think I can stop sharing and yep. uh, we can crack on from there. That was awesome, John. I love the, there's so many things I love about all the tips. I love the little, the, the bitmoji, John, where he's mm -hmm. holding his hand out saying, can I have some money? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's so many people that go too fast into that, that sales Absolutely. pitch and, you know, not understanding the etiquette, but I love your, your sense of humor, your brand. And I got to give a big plug right now, you guys. <laughs> this book right here has so many awesome nuggets. If you are in career transition um, or, you know, you're unemployed, you know, actively looking for a job or even just starting to think about that process of how to build up your personal brand. Um, I, I mean, I. I bought this book, John, because I'm I'm a friend and I'm a fan of yours and I love the information. And, and I was like, oh, it'll be interesting to read. I mean, I got stuff from this book. I remember I was like earmarking pages. I actually, um, if you guys are friends with me, um, if you have my cell phone number, if you call my cell phone, I'm going to turn it off right now. If you listen to my voicemail, I got a little tip from John that I have in my voicemail right now. Nice. Um, so you can call and listen to it. And there's so many great little nuggets from him in the book. So I have to give a, a big push there. We're going to open this up to some Q&A. So if you guys have any questions for John, this is your chance. Go ahead and ask your question now. Don't be shy. Okay. Um, Beth I'm was being to stop sharing, by the way. Should I click the oh, stop Oh, yeah, go sharing? ahead and stop sharing. It's yeah. not on screen anymore, but cool. yeah, totally fine. Awesome. So Beth loves your experiments. I do too, John. Tell us a little bit about 
do you have a schedule of experiments or how are, how are you doing these things? Yeah, well, I've decided now to make all of my content experimental. So once yeah. each at the start of each month, I'll pick a new topic and I'll test that for the month. And then the following month, I'll write up the results and share them with my Espresso email subscribers and with my community on LinkedIn. Right now, this, this very month, I'm testing a video every day. Okay. My, my theory about that is that people will get bored of my face pretty quickly. And so my <laughs> new counts will go down because one of my tips is to make sure that you vary the different types of content. You know, maybe you put out a poll, maybe you put out a document post, maybe you put out a video, maybe a text post. But if you put all of one type, I think that gets really boring. So I'm just yeah. putting that to the test. Uh, my test for next month is going to be to sign up for a one month trial of LinkedIn premium and really okay. put it to its paces, through its paces, and then share my experience and say to people, okay, do you really need to pay for this platform? What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Uh, and I thought, so, so that's what I'm going to be doing next month. But once a month, I'm going to pick a different topic and I'm going to go for it on LinkedIn. Okay, very good. So you don't have premium right now or sales standard. I don't right? know. I've, I've, I've been grateful enough that I've, I, yeah, I've been lucky enough that I've been able to grow to 33,000 followers now without paying at all for LinkedIn. And, and the reason is because LinkedIn doesn't really restrict your organic reach. So, you know, it doesn't stop you filling in your profile for free. Right. It doesn't stop you creating content for free, recording videos, whatever. And it doesn't put a limit on on your organic reach. So someone like me who's a content creator, I don't need to pay for the privilege of those things, but I'm, I am I do appreciate that there are other benefits of having the gold badge, and that's what I'm going to investigate next month to see whether it's worth it for someone like me to pay for this. Good, and we can learn from you, I mean, from watching that experience. And, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm chuckling at, I see a comment from Dan, Dan, Dan Roth, <laughs> freaking experience in the house like he's so excited <laughs> but it, it's not that dan roth though it's not do you do you know did you watch this or have you connected yet with this dan roth um, i know this is that dan roth but it's not that dan not roth. Dan dan. <laughs> I, know dan roth. I know both well i know both dan roth sort of but the other the linkedin dan roth doesn't really know me very well but yeah right. cool. Nice. So, so, so the Dan Roth who's watching today, don't feel bad because Dan Daniel Roth from LinkedIn, I mean, really very rarely has interaction with any of us on the LinkedIn yeah, Rockstars sure. list because he's busy and he's he's got a business to run, you know, work, working at LinkedIn. So, um, you know, we're here today really helping to um, bring additional exposure to all the folks who are looking at making a job change, whether you're in career transition or working but looking today. And and there were so many great tips, tips that John was sharing with us here today. And I wanna just kind of remind you guys, if you joined us a little bit late and you're catching the very tail end of it, John was talking about how to best approach people to connect on LinkedIn. And he had so many great um, points of information to share with us. So if you still want to watch that whole playback, I'm just gonna pop up on screen right now for you guys. Um, I'm actually I'm adding adding a way that I'll be I'll be clipping out each of these videos and I'll, and I'll be emailing them to you. So you don't have to watch the whole four hours if you want to only watch John's segment, but you do need to sign up at my web page and I'm going to put it up on screen. Actually, I'm going to stop the ticker just so you can see this statically on screen here. Um, the ticker will not stop. Hold on. Let's try this. Take three. There we go. So if you go to mellermarketing.com slash March 2021, I will send you an email with the playback links of John's talk as well as information on, on John, where you can learn more about him, his experience, his book, all that other good things on there. Can, and somebody said, can you put up the last link that John shared? What was the last link that you shared, John? Do you remember? Was well, it probably your to my LinkedIn? The very last one was my LinkedIn Learner Lounge. So that's esperian.co.uk slash LinkedIn. So I, okay. can, I can pull up that slide if you want. Um, could you, would you mind pulling that up real quick? And then yeah, I'll absolutely. look through and see if there's any, any other comments that are coming. While you're doing that, I'm just going to pop Shelly in because I see she's hanging out in the green room waiting for us. Hey, Shelly, how are you doing today? I am great. Great to be here. Good to be you. So I, I'm so glad to see you in here. We're going to put you back in the green room as we finish up the conversation with John. But John and Shelly, do you guys know each other? Have you met yet? Yeah, we, we do. do. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> be kind. Nice one. Nice to see you, Shelly. Yeah, good to see you. Good. All right, Shelly, hang out just for a second. We'll bring you back up again. So I think, John, let's see. We got okay, that. Let me just push that across. There you go. Cool screen effect thing going on here. So I think yep. this was it. Let me remove my little banner so it's not covering that up right now. So Asperian. 
Crash LinkedIn. That's it. That's my LinkedIn Learner Lounge. So there's loads yeah. of free tips there, starter guide, engagement guide, all sorts of free stuff. And also, I, I do have a LinkedIn course, and the, the presentation that I've just given you is a snippet from one of the modules of my of my LinkedIn course. So it's all all the information is on the website. Go and go and check it out, and hopefully you'll get something useful there. That's awesome. Really great information there, John. Thank you for that. And I want to ask, there's another question. This came in from um, Jeff Tapiro. If you have a large network, so John, you've got a large network. I think he said, is it 30,000 connections or 30,000 followers? Which was 33,000 connections and about eight, uh, sorry, 33,000 followers and 8,000 connections. So wow. I had, when I switched to follow first mode a couple of years ago, there was a big divergence in the number what of happened? connections and the number of followers. Um, yeah. Honestly, even though I've got 8,000 connections, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm really in regular touch with a lot of them. I'm happy to, 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 to be in their networks. So if I weren't, then I would disconnect from them. But okay. I get involved in lots of conversations. And the, the, the biggest time saver for me is those voice notes that I mentioned earlier in, 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 the, in the presentation, because they're just much quicker to record, much more personal, much more memorable, and you yeah. can do them on the go. Uh, and so I just voice note probably like 20, 30 times a day wow. easily. Which, which sounds like a lot, but it, it's a great way of keeping in touch with people, much more personal, much more memorable. So I recommend you give it a try if you use the LinkedIn mobile app. For me, it's been a game changer, especially since Clubhouse has come along where people are already kind of audio focused. Right. And then you hit them with a voice note. They're like, yes, I love this. Yeah. So yeah. It's been really powerful. So that's one of the techniques to answer Jeff's question. How do you keep all those relationships going? Do you message people on a regular basis? You know, what what other advice would you have? And, and thinking about people that are maybe looking for a new job or maybe actively unemployed and career searching, what tips would you have for them? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that the, the most important thing is to position yourself as not the person who is only active only when you need a job. That's, that's kind of a bad long-term play because then what that does is it sets the agenda that this person is probably going to get in touch with me only when they need something. That's not that's not the feeling that you want to give someone else. So it's a good idea to just set yourself reminders to keep in touch with people and especially the, the highest value people in your network, the people who can really connect you with others, the people who really deliver value, the people that you want to be, associate yourself with, keep in touch with them on a, on a, at least a semi-regular basis so that you're not just going to them when you need something. You just check in on them every now and then, see how they're doing. You know, you've seen some content and it made you think of their specialism. You send it to them. You okay. share that you think that would be interesting. You try and introduce them to someone really cool that you know in your network. Not just when you need something, but just because you're trying to be a good person, trying to help the other person. That's the kind of person that others want to know. And that's the best way of doing it. Great advice. I really love it. And and you're such a positive person. You do this for me. I mean, you send me stuff sometimes and you, you'll remember I posted asking a question. It was the other day. I was posting about how long can our sliders be, you know, sliders, quote unquote, when you upload a PDF, how many pages? And I put 31. Yeah. And I think you messaged me later on. You're like, there's somebody who did 100 pages and you you sent me the link. And I was like, wow, that was really nice of you. you yeah. Know, well, I mean, you know, what, 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 why not try and go out of your way to help other people? Honestly, it is worth it. In the long run, all of this stuff, whether you believe in karma or whatever, yeah. it all comes back. If you're a good Absolutely. person, it will come back. So be a good person on LinkedIn. It will It will pay off in the long run. So I'm going to do one final question and then we'll wrap up with you, John. And this is a question from Yolanda. If I update my LinkedIn profile, will all my connections know? Well, I think I think LinkedIn has a setting that, that for, for certain things where you can choose, you know, should I I've updated my headline. Do you want all of your network to know about these things? So you can you can opt to to notify them. But that doesn't apply to every part of your profile for me. Unless it's a really significant change, I wouldn't try and notify my whole network about right. that personally. Um, it, but it depends on your circumstances and how how important it is to get that message out right now. If it's important, then fine. But but please don't overdo it. You know, if, if you're just yeah. using it to to push notifications to people every week because you, you just want to say, "Hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm mm -hmm. here. Hey, I'm here." That's not cool. Don't do that. Yeah. And I think what Yolanda may be referring to once upon a time, John, remember, it would say Brenda updated her headline, Brenda updated her photo, Brenda. Up, and now it doesn't do that. I think the only thing that goes out is when you start a job, when you're promoted, when you start or end education, 
And there's one more category. I can't remember what it is, but you have to enable it. it so it's not like the every single thing. So Yolanda, right. I mean, technically they will know because if they look at your profile, they can see it, but it's not going to push out a notification. So thank you for, for asking that question. So John, thank you so much for joining today. I um, want to give you the opportunity. Any final comments, anything else that we should know as we wrap up the conversation here? Just my number one tip for LinkedIn is get involved in more conversations, both public ones through people's comments and people's posts and privately through direct messages. If you can start more conversations or get involved in more conversations, you will get better results from LinkedIn. It's the long, slow burn approach, but it really works. Start more conversations. Awesome. And if you want, if you want to connect with me, yeah. I know you asked oh, that yeah. Beth please read my about statement because there is a secret word lurking in there. And if you use that secret word, I'll be much, much more likely to accept your invitation to connect with me on LinkedIn. And I can't believe I haven't pulled your profile up yet. Let me pull the screen up. It'll take me just a second to enable this on LinkedIn right now. But here is John's profile on LinkedIn. And John, you do such a great job of personal branding. You're a great example for anyone to follow who may be struggling with how do I build my brand on LinkedIn? I mean, consistency in communications and messaging, all that other good stuff. Here's John's um, URL up on screen. And you, are you open to accepting new invitations, John? Do they Absolutely, I am. But I will be much more likely to say yes if you use my secret word in my about statement. Awesome. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you again for joining us. It was a awesome. Thanks for having me, Brenda. Cheers. All right. Take care, John. Thank you.